to cell C here. Uh, we have two uh, correctional officials that's assigned to this day room area to supervise the inmate. We have one that uh, assigned to that control station that uh, controls all the doors and entrance and cell doors. The inmate is allowed to, of course, view television. We have a television out here uh, for him, radio. Uh, he eats his meals here on the, uh, in the day room or in the cell if he wants to. We basically leave this door open for him. He can come in and out to the day room as he wishes. And on the day of the execution, uh, for the first time since he's been assigned to second prison, the inmate is allowed to contact visiting with his family and possibly attorneys and friends. That contact visit starts around 10 a.m. and with breaks for meals uh, in between uh, ends around 11 o'clock uh, p.m. After 11 o'clock, he's brought back to this area uh, to wait uh, preparation for the execution itself. And yes, we do allow uh, by request, uh, some special phone calls for the inmate if he, if he desires. Some inmates uh, request special items, some don't. A lot of them like, uh, maybe they get a burger or something locally, and some, and sometimes they don't request a last minute. But when they do, we try to get anything within reason that they, they, they request. Uh, at approximately 1 a.m., Myself and the escort team will come around to him and ask him to prepare for the execution. And at that point, he's told to strip down to his shorts. And he's escorted from this area to the prep area where the IVs are starting. Who's strapped in and who's strapped in the seat. Uh, the medical team comes in and establishes the IV uh, catheters. And after the IV catheters are started, I'll come in at that point and get a last statement. That statement, of course, as I said, is recorded and then it's transcribed and released to the media. After the last statement is taken, uh, the chaplain comes in and stays with the inmate up until it's time to be taken to the chamber. And around 1.50 a.m., the inmates brought into the chamber itself and placed in front of the viewing window uh, to prepare to start the execution. This curtain here is closed at that point. And then the executioners filed in, and the executioners are behind this curtain. There are as I said, members on my members of my staff, and that they are people that have been basically volunteered, but selected by me uh, to participate. And they they may not always be the same people, but they could be over a certain period of time. Could be some of the people that have participated before. Uh, there's three executioners each execution. Uh, two of those actually uh, handle uh, what we call live lines that actually go into the inmate, and one of those executioners uh, handles a dummy line that does not have the actual uh, lethal drugs in it. And that's done for reason of confidentiality. So nobody knows exactly who handled the lines that were actually, actually contained the lethal chemicals. But it comes in from here and, and it goes through to the inmate into those lines that have been established by the medical team that I told you about a couple of minutes before to uh, if there's nothing that prevents the execution from proceeding, I will come around and talk with the witnesses and let them know that the execution will proceed as scheduled. Okay, this is the witness room. This is where the execution is re uh, observed by the official witnesses. Uh, witnesses from the media, uh, state official witnesses, and the inmate witnesses. There could be upwards of uh, probably no more than 16 people in this room at 
one time as uh, far as witnesses concerned and of course uh, members of my staff. Uh, be one of my staff in here and one at the door. But all the witnesses of course are oriented and taught with prior to witnessing and uh, they're told uh, what's expected. What they hear from me is that uh, we expect for everybody to uh, of course behave professionally and appropriately in here and that uh, we don't allow any uh, outbursts or anything of that nature or as far as trying to communicate with other witnesses and to keep a calm and professional demeanor while uh, viewing the execution. And precisely at 2 a.m. Uh, thereabouts the execution will begin. At that point is when he's given the drugs, and of course there is a sedative first drug that he receives that renders him unconscious before he receives the actual other two chemicals. Are there medical personnel in present in the room? Yes. Okay. I thought I'd read something about the American Medical Association having said that doctors weren't allowed to participate in executions or something of that nature. I that, don't know what you're talking about. Is it is a, a prison doctor that's here? Or is it someone from the outside? That's confidential who actually participates. Okay. Do you have somebody on hand if, um, if for whatever reason, um, something were to go wrong, have a doctor on hand um, to, to supervise? There are medical staff available. Okay. And there is a doctor available. But who those people are is confident. Usually, the inmates pronounce dead anywhere from around 215 to 220. Normally, in that range, more likely around 215, 217 is about the average time of death. I will uh, come around and, of course, announce the time of death to the witnesses and verify with them that the execution has taken place in accordance with uh, uh, the, the orders of the court. And at that point, the witnesses are escorted down. Any of the witnesses that want to speak with me, of course, are going to Ms. Walker. And if the witnesses do not want to talk with the media, then they're escorted to their vehicles by my staff and to proceed from the institution. the hardest probably would be. And the only thing personal that I can say about it is, of course, uh, you know that situations of that uh, type, nobody looks forward to having, to having to deal with those types of situations, but it's a matter of law that we have to deal with it. So from a personal standpoint, it is tough to see to uh, people in that type of situation where uh, we, by law, have to do with them. 